Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a ingredient breakdown and review of the Halo Beauty Kiwi Skin Boosters. After I posted my last review on the hair, skin, and nails um, vitamin from Halo Beauty, a lot of you said that you're actually using the Kiwi Booster and that you wanted me to break down the ingredients. So that's what today's video is going to be all about. So if you are curious to learn more about the ingredients in the Kiwi Booster, then just keep watching. Okay, so in the last video, a lot of you guys asked me why I compared a multivitamin to the hair, skin, and nails um, Halo Beauty product. And it's not that I was comparing them. Um, I was actually just highlighting which ingredients are present in both. Because when you're taking multiple supplements, it's really important to know that you're getting mul like the same ingredient from multiple products because sometimes it's not good to double up on some vitamins especially fat soluble vitamins as they're often just stored in the body long term and it's really hard for us to get rid of them so an example of this would be vitamin d3 um, there is such thing as vitamin D toxicity when you have too much vitamin D in your system. So that is an ingredient that is present in both multivitamins, uh, the Kiwi Booster, and the hair, skin, and nails products. So it's just something to be aware of. So I really wasn't trying to compare both products. I wasn't saying one is better than the other. Um, I was not saying that they're the same thing at all. I really just wanted to highlight the um, ingredients that are present in a typical multivitamin in addition. Um, to the hair, skin, and nails vitamin, and then just going over the concentrations of each. So I am going to do the same thing in this video. I'm just going to highlight which vitamins are present in a typical multivitamin and also the Kiwi Skin Booster. Okay, so the Kiwi Skin Booster has vitamin D3 at a level of 1,000 international units, and my central multivitamin has 800 international units. So if I was to take both of these every single day, I'd be at about 1,800 international units for my vitamin D3. And the recommended upper limit of vitamin D3 is 4,000 international units. So I haven't even hit half of the uh, daily upper limit. So taking both together would be fine. Um, next we've got vitamin B1. Um, in the Kiwi Booster, five milligrams. In Centrum, it's 3.85. Same thing for vitamin B2, five milligrams in the Kiwi Booster, 3.85 milligrams in a normal multivitamin. Vitamin B6, uh, we've got two milligrams in the booster, Kiwi Booster, and five milligrams in a Centrum multivitamin. So all B vitamins are water soluble, so if you have too much, then you end up just peeing it out. Not a big deal. Um, and then the last vitamin present in the Kiwi Booster is zinc, uh, 10 milligrams, and in the Centrum, I have eight milligrams. So again, if I took both of them together, it would be 18 milligrams, and the upper limit is about 40 milligrams per day for zinc. And you can actually also get zinc toxicity if you, if you have too much zinc in your system. And there's a whole slurry of side effects that can go on if you do have a zinc um, overage in your system. So if you're curious more about that, just Google like zinc overdose basically, or too much zinc in your system. Um, it's also important to note that there's a lot of foods that also contain zinc. Um, such as red meat, poultry, seafood, whole grains, and cereals. There's never been a case of uh, getting zinc, um, like too much zinc from food, but if you are taking multivitamins and additional supplements that contain zinc and you eat a lot of red meat or a lot of seafood, you might just want to watch how much zinc you are intaking on a daily basis. So just some food for thought. Um, I'm not comparing multivitamins to these kind of supplement skin and hair products. I'm just demonstrating that there is ingredients that are present in both. And I think a lot of us can probably relate more to taking a multivitamin every day than a hair, skin and nail booster. So I just thought it was a good product to kind of, um, you know, show that both ingredients are present in. So that is why I used the Centrum for um, not comparison, but just to show the ingredients that show up in both products. Okay, so now let's move on to the extracts part of the formulation. And similar to the hair, skin, and nails vitamin, um, the Kiwi Booster contains rosehip extract. So again, there have been a lot of studies done on this ingredient um, that it does significantly improve crow's feet wrinkles, skin moisture, elasticity. Um, but it is important to note that the study was done with three grams of rosehip and the Kiwi Booster contains about 400 milligrams of rosehip, so um, you know not as much as was included in the study, so it's hard to compare those results and if it would be as effective at a lower dose. 
Oh, and again, I will include links for all of the primary literature that I'm mentioning here, um, just in the uh, description below. Okay, so next we've got a bromelain extract, and bromelain is um, extract contains a peptidase, so it's an enzyme that breaks down protein, and this is derived from pineapple. So in uh, vitro, it does have really strong anti-inflammatory action, and then in vitro or, or in vivo or clinical trials, it has been used to treat burns because essentially that enzyme breaks down the uh, dead tissue and allows for cell regeneration. So there have been a lot of studies done on bromelain extract and it has been found to modulate tumor growth, blood coagulation, inflammatory changes, uh, debridement of third degree burns, and debridement just means that it is basically getting rid of dead tissue. So if, if you get a burn, there's a lot of damaged and dead tissue that needs to be removed so that that burn can heal. So it is often used uh, topically to treat third degree burns. It is really important to note, though, that bromelain, when taken orally, actually enhances the absorption of drugs. So if you are taking any other medication, you want to make sure that you've consulted your physician before taking this product because it could actually increase the absorption of any other medication that you're taking. And medication is very... Um, dose and concentration dependent and how it gets absorbed in the body, the bioavailability, all of that is really important in how it works um, for you and in your body. So if you are taking any medication, that's, you know, everything from um, anti-inflammatories to birth control to, you know, stronger um, medications, you really want to make sure that you have consulted your physician before incorporating this product into your supplement regime because it could affect um, how much of your, um, of the active drug you're actually absorbing into your bloodstream and it could completely change the dose that you end up getting um, so it could really affect the outcome of your medication in your body so something to really uh, pay attention to if you are on any other medications so the next ingredient is methyl siphonyl methane and again this is a part of the hair skin and nails vitamin as well uh, this compound takes Place in the natural sulfur cycle. Basically, you know, bacteria take up sulfates, they produce a bunch of compounds, they release these compounds, plants uptake those sulfur compounds, and they produce this uh, methyl siphonyl methane. So some common uses for MSM are arthritis and inflammation, cartilage preservation, improved range of motion and physical function, reduced muscle soreness associated with exercise, reduced oxidative stress, improved seasonal allergies, and it has been found to improve skin quality and texture by acting as a sulfur donor to keratin. Um, but these studies for the topical effects have been done with uh, topical formulations, not oral ingestion of MSM. So something else to just take note of. Okay, so next we've got amla or Indian gooseberry, which again is also in the hair, skin, and nails vitamin. Um, so I'll just go over this quickly. It is the richest source of vitamin C in ripe fruit. It does have preclinical studies stating that it's a potent antioxidant. It has antibacterial and astringent pro properties and it does induce production of procollagen, and that's um, in vitro studies. Next, we've got grapeseed extract, which again is just a really, really potent antioxidant. So it's gonna scavenge free radicals um, and reduce any kind of oxidative stress. Okay, so next we've got quercetin, and this is a compound that I'm actually really passionate about. So it is a flavanol, which um, is part of the flavonoid family. And it is found in onions, grapes, berries, cherries, broccoli, and citrus fruits. In the Kiwi Booster, we've got 40 milligram dose, and it has a lot of uh, clinical uses. So it is a potent antioxidant, it has anti-inflammatory properties, um, it is involved, or it's used for cardiovascular disease prevention, um, and then for neurodegenerative disorders, it actually protects against neuronal injury, um, it has anti-cancer activity against prostate cancer, and it does have antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-allergenic effects. So it is a really uh, powerful plant flavonoid that is present in a lot of fruits and vegetables. It is yellow, and it is a really good ingredient to include in your diet. And it does have a lot of use for topical formulations as well. So you might have actually seen this in some topical products before. Uh, but quercetin is a great flavanol that is, you know, a potent antioxidant and just plays a great role in the whole systemic anti-inflammatory action. Okay, so next we've got the ceramide complex. 
um, which is again from a rice extract. So it's got 40 milligrams of phytoceramides and ceramides are really great at improving the moisture of the skin, uh, increasing that moisture barrier to protect against trans epidermal water loss. And it has also been linked to a reduction of melanogenesis or the de deposition of melanin in the skin. So gonna reduce pigmentation uh, caused by UV radiation. Okay, so next it is the star ingredient of this formulation, which is this Kiwi RX ingredient. Now it is just a Kiwi seed extract. Um, so in published studies, it has been found to suppress acute inflammation and enhance melanin disappearance in guinea pig skin. The only published studies that show the effects on the skin when it's been taken orally have been with guinea pigs. And so this is where that, you know, anti-inflammatory and reduction of melanin has been found. So Tati is claiming on her website all these other activities. And I did find an article um, that was published not in a journal, but by the manufacturer of this kiwi seed extract. And they did their own studies that kind of show these other potential activities. So again, I'm just gonna repeat that there's no published data on the role for the anti-acne and the sebum control, but the manufacturer of the kiwi seed extract has shown that it inhibits 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme responsible for converting testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, and that plays a big role in acne, because um, essentially this hormone stimulates the sebum, sebaceous gland, and that starts the production of sebum. Um, the bacteria P. acnes loves our sebum and that's how they kind of grow and thrive. So if you can kind of inhibit how much DHT or dihydrotestosterone is produced, it's been linked to a reduction of acne. So they did find, uh, the manufacturer found that it inhibits 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme that allows that reaction to go forward. The manufacturer also did uh, studies that show that it improves skin wrinkles, reduces sebum production, and acne, and it brings the skin to an ideal pH range. However, it's really important to note that these studies are not double blind. Um, they're not published in a reputable journal, and they were done by the manufacturer. So it's really hard to trust um, scientific data that comes from the person that's trying to sell that product, because of course they're gonna want it to work. It's really hard to validate those kinds of studies. So I think a lot more studies should be done regarding this ingredient, but I am gonna include the link to that specific paper in the description box below. So you can go through all the studies that they did. And it really does seem like this company is the manufacturer for her kiwi extract because the things that they're claiming in this paper, she's also claiming on her website and they match up uh, pretty identical. So I would say this is probably the manufacturer of her kiwi seed extract. And then last but not least, we do have astaxanthin. Uh, this is a product derived from algae. Potent, potent antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, immune enhancing properties. In vitro, it has been shown to increase collagen content in human dermal fibroblast. And then in vivo, in mice, it's been shown to accelerate wound healing. There have been a lot of clinical trials done with this ingredient as well. Oh yeah, and this one is present in the Hair, Skin and Nails Booster. So the clinical trials, um, it's shown an enhanced immune response, alleviated age, aging related changes of residual skin surface components, reduced oxidative stress in the skin, improvement of skin elasticity, improvement of skin moisture, um, and then reduction of overall average wrinkle depth and a decrease in sebum oil. So this is a really good ingredient to take orally to just improve your overall skin health. And the amount of astaxanthin in the Kiwi Booster is the same as the hair, skin, and nails vitamin. So it is four milligrams of that ingredient. Okay, so that is all the ingredients for the Halo Beauty Kiwi Skin Booster. Um, I think there is some really interesting ingredients in there. I think that if you are looking for something to improve your skin health, this definitely could be something to try out. It's, you know, just full of antioxidants and some compounds that do show good anti-inflammatory action, uh, which is just great for you systemically as well as your skin. Again, before you start taking any supplement at all, always consult your physician. I know we kind of tend to take this uh, not so seriously and kind of as a joke, but again, as you heard in this formulation, the bromelain extract could actually interfere with all medications by increasing the absorption of those um, medications. So before you take this product, um, I definitely recommend you consult your physician and especially, especially if you are on any medications. 
I also just want to put this out there that I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician. So when I'm doing these ingredient breakdowns and these product reviews, I'm really just looking at the science behind the ingredients. I'm not making recommendations. I'm not going to recommend supplement products for you guys to take. I have said what I take in the past, but I'm not going to recommend brands at this time. And I'm just not going to tell you guys what to take in your life. You have to take this information and do what you will with it. Um, I'm not going to make product recommendations for dietary supplements or vitamins or anything along those lines at all. But with all that being said, that is the end of this video. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you do want me to break down and review any more supplements or products in general, just leave them in the comments below. And if you're not already, please do subscribe to my channel. I upload five times a week and we are building an amazing community of science babes. So it'd be great if you could be part of that. But thank you guys so much for watching my video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.